What? That's Why terrible. is my music this voice? Coffee and beer. Um, I, I need a rhyme that goes with that. Coffee and beer. Never, you know, like. Never shed a tear. Never shed a. T- <laughs> awful. <laughs> You know, you know, like liquor before wine, never sicker. However, it go. How's it? How's it, all those stupid rhymes go? Beer before liquor, never sicker. <laughs> liquor in the front. <laughs> <liquor. laughs> Shark on whiskey is mighty risky. That sort of thing. A bear on beer is a beer engineer. <laughs> coffee and maybe beer and coffee goes down roughly. <laughs> oh, oh, this is an inbox video. Yes. If you guys want to post questions to Inbox, you know, like stuff that we may actually answer on this dumb show, you can go to our dumb website and ask your dumb question at techsyndicate.com slash forum slash inbox, E-X-E. One word, no spaces, no hyphens, no... Just browse the forum. It's cool. Yeah, do, do whatever you want. I don't, even, I don't care anymore. We're very laid back and groovy around here. Let's answer some questions, shall we? Are social... Social. <laughs> are solar laptops feasible from Kroger? Not Kroger, Kroger. Um, so he's browsing for a laptop for college, and um, he saw a project called the Soul Laptop. And um, Yeah, he's not going to be buying a solar laptop for college this time around. No, don't do it. <laughs> I mean, unless you're in a... Okay, if, you, if you're in, like, Egypt or Saudi Arabia or Arizona, and your entire college is outdoors, maybe. If you want, you can go to Harbor Freight and get a solar charging thing for, like, $200, and it's this big, like, three square meter thing. Do that. Don't get a lot. And that, that just gives you USB and electrical outlets. Just do that. Don't. And then, then you can conveniently carry around this three foot slab <laughs> of solar paneling that weighs about, what, what, 100, 100 pounds? Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah. There you go. Uh, you know, one of these days, the power requirements for, I mean, I guess the power efficiency is going to be such that it'll make sense, but not just yet. When, Our, we, when we invented display technology that doesn't use any power, and when we get to about three nanometers on the lithography process, then we will have things that use comparatively vanishingly small amounts of power. we got to figure out heat dissipation for that sort of, uh, you know. Well, not if we're not going to run it at a really high speed, so... I True. mean, there's uh, one of the other videos uh, we were joking about, you know, can X86 do low power, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't think of it, but uh, I actually, I have a handheld X86 palm top that runs on two AA batteries for 40 hours. What? Yes. I have it right now. I can I can go get it. We could show it on camera and everybody at home is like freaking out. It's like, no way. It's not X86. That's crazy. It's an we'll eight, do it in post. It's, a, it's an 80186. Um, it's an 80186. How many one? I've never seen a 186. I've seen 8086. I had one of those, and I had some 286 processors. It's actually it came after the 286, and it's a gimped version of the 286. It's designed specifically for a palm top. It's a system on chip. Wow. And yeah, whatever Intel engineers figured that out, we need to hire them and have them work on Haswell or whatever, because that would be awesome. But it's a if you want to look it up, the commercial product it ended up in was an HP 100 LX, and also Jesus. later the HP 200 LX, but 640 by 200 LCD display, palm top, handheld computing, 40 hours of power on time from two AA batteries. That's, that's an amazing pixel density from back in the day. Yes, it is an amazing pixel density. Actually, the <laughs> pixel density is about half that of Retina, so it's not actually terrible. It's ridiculous. Oh, uh, by the way, speaking of what fuels us, I want to say thanks to Beer Guy Reviews. You guys should check him out if you like beer. And uh, he's given me this, uh, how do you say, Dieu de Cille? Dieu, Dieu de Ciel. Yeah, I think so. That's the brand name. This is the Shaman. Uh, I just had another one. I forgot what which one it was, but I had the uh, the Imperial IPA, and then this one is just an Imperial Pale Ale, which is really good and kind of a sweet but kick you in the face type thing. Nine percent alcohol. So Beer Guy Reviews. Thanks a lot. If you guys want to see some cool beer reviews, go over to his channel and check it out. Plug over. Think like solar calculators in the 1950s. Solar calculators would just be ridiculous but now we have solar calculators all right moving on okay how about this if you were on the lam what would your alias be and why Mm, sounds simple enough so you're so you're running from the law you're you're out there trying to hide you're running around the country you're on the lam who are you (laughs) i know i know you already (laughs) yeah existing members of the audience are already correctly guessing gary wozniak (laughs) (laughs) and why because who else would it be (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> this picture of logan incognito on the screen this is awful wow this mustache man i look like i look like a villain from a western can you see that back over there yeah i look like a villain from a western someone already called me a villain from a um 
a Disney cartoon on, on <laughs> Linus Tech Forums or whatever the hell that thing he's got going on up there in Canada. They, <laughs> they call me a cartoon villain or something. Actually, no, I think that was on 4chan and it got posted there. And Texas Oil Baron. Texas Oil. <laughs> um, what would I go by? Oh, God. I'd have to make something up. You know, I used to Randy go Randy something. Randy? <laughs> It'll never figure out. Uh, Randy Licorice, probably. <laughs> And the last name, Bumsuckle. Randy Licorice Bumsuckle. <laughs> Bumsuckle. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so asinine that people will overlook it. You know, when, when you get something that's, like, suspicious, like, who's Tom Smith? I don't know. Pull all files on Tom Smith. Licorice Bumsuckle? Oh, he's probably some, like, flamboyant singer from Bermuda. <laughs> maybe maybe a slightly less inconspicuous last name, like Arbuckle. Arbuckle. Okay, fine. <laughs> all I remember is once I got drunk in Canada while I was doing a Scottish play on the road. And all I remember is like putting on uh, bed sheets, like a cape, and running around the halls, screaming, "I'm licorice bum suckle." <laughs> <laughs> Are you Everybody sure? got really quiet. Are you sure you weren't touring? With Wait, like... no, that wasn't me. Uh, graphene. Oh, here's a really long question from uh, uh, Benotiti. Ben Benotiti. T T I T. Yes. I, don't, I, I always do, just destroy names. Let me this just is a really long, really long article here to ask us if we think graphene is cool. Yeah. It's like, let me just summarize that for you. Is graphene awesome? Yes. Gra graphene is, in fact, awesome. And, in fact, somebody figured out how to manufacture graphene using a DVD burner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's some use for DVD burners after all. I'm going to start recommending them for graphene uh, manufacturing processes. A little known fact, they also make an excellent um, heat sink and... Some of our favorite heat sink companies are already working on graphene heat sinks. Are we allowed to say who? It's, it's under NDA, right? Yes, we cannot say who. Uh, but we, I want to tell them about the graphene heat sinks. <laughs> oh, God, I want to do this coffee time. We Actually, several of our contacts are working on graphene heat sinks, so, and, and we know that from public announcements as well. So, yeah. All right, this next question is from someone else. Uh, it's from NSA Project Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a new account. Dot, dot, dot. All right, from NSA Project Jesus, in your last inbox at EXT, well, Logan said how he would like to climb a mountain and play a video game at the top. If you could only do this uh, one time, Logan, what mountain would you climb? Right here it is. Yonafrau. Or Youngfrau. Youngfrau. I would climb Mountain Young, Mount Youngfrau because it's only like, it's, it's under 14,000 uh, feet. I'm not sure what the meters are. I should know the meters because that's more important because it's in Switzerland. The important thing is you can breathe at the top. Yeah. Um, I would climb up there because certain months of the year it's not covered in snow. So I would climb up there in you know, a time when it's not covered in snow. The scenery around there, we've got some higher peaks around the area. The entire Jung, uh, Jungfrau area is beautiful. So I would probably chill up there. I wouldn't take the road to the top. I would start at the bottom and climb up. And, um, you know, just hang out up there and play some games. Now, next you want to know what game... I would play at the top. And it would have to be a multiplayer game. So I would play Half-Life 1 multiplayer. Because it's ridiculous. It's almost as ridiculous as the idea of climbing a mountain and playing on the top. Uh, you also want to know um, how I would get the computer up there to the top of the mountain. Well, I have two different ways that I could do this. One is I would attach this. <laughs> yeah, I would attach this to um, perhaps one of these. It's so little. Oh, it's so covered in dust. I've been moving a lot of things around in the office, but it's really ugly. Uh, this is the PCTU 100 from Lee & Lee. A lot of the reviewers on the internet have complained that it is too small to actually do anything with. I beg to differ. This is exactly the right size to put a GTX 760 in it uh, or a, you know, a 670 Direct CU 2 Mini or something like that. Put one of those in here. Put an ITX board. Put a quad core. Uh, hell, put a new Haswell in there. I don't care. Put a... An Asus Impact. I don't know. We were going to put a Xeon in there. Put a Xeon in here. I don't I don't give a damn. Put an SSD in here. Load it up in your backpack. One of these pops off. These things just pop right off. Let me see. Oh, not the other side. There we go. See, just take that off. Put a screen right there. These things scratch easy. Fixed forever. Put a screen right there. Put it in your backpack. And uh, climb. And once you get up to the top, you pull out a keyboard and a mouse. And some beef jerky. Or if you're a vegetarian, some... Zucchini jerky. If you can schlep that solar panel up the hill, too, you can run it off solar. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to need power up there. I'm going to need solar power. I'm going to need internet up there. I've got to get Kane to build me a cantenna. Well, actually, um, I think that they make some 12-volt ATX inverters, and with Haswell being the low power that it is, you could probably just get a direct 12-volt to ATX adapter and be good to go. 
as long as I don't overclock it. Yeah. And we can mount some solar panels on top of here. We should call a few people to make this happen because I've been talking about it for a long time. I just sometimes I get a little bit like I, I really hate calling people and asking for sponsorship money, but I think it would be actually a lot of cool. It'd be almost as much fun as giving away my car. <laughs> Alluding, he says, alluding to an upcoming contest, dot, 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 question mark. You guys want to win it? Never mind. Um, okay, if you could only play one game at the top of a mountain, what game would you play up there? All right, if you could only play one game on top of a mountain, what would you play? I'm not really sure. I, it's not, I mean, I'm not sure what game would be time appropriate to play at the top of a mountain. Because, like, Click Adventure, it's like, yeah. I, I, well, a multiplayer game, like a LAN party. Hmm, I don't know. Probably something old school like Doom or Quake or something. Well, you know what? You see this area here on the screen? Um, all right, so Wendell, here's what I, pro I propose. Uh, at the base, well, not at the base, but like high up on the hill at, at, at Jungfrau, um, there is a spot, it looks like a few houses and maybe some antennas and stuff like that. I'm not sure what's going on there. You can set up a base camp there, and all you'll need to do is get one of these parabolic grid antennas like this. Hey, everybody. Let's put it right there. <laughs> and you'll need to point this... And probably Kane and I, maybe Pistol as well, up on top. We'll set up a little LAN party area. And uh, you can, uh, you know, get the, the ground going, get the uh, internet going on the ground, and we'll play some LAN, well, LAN games up there. What do you think? Seems like, like a pretty solid plan. And uh, it's a good excuse to go to Switzerland and hang out with some people in Europe. I mean, we could, we should probably schedule this around the time that uh, DreamHack is happening because that's over in, um, in Sweden. I'm not sure how we're going to get the antenna through the TSA. They've gotten really grumpy these days. We'll just have to get one while we're over there. I'll find some of our members in that part of the world. Uh, if you guys are over in that part of the world and you have access to a parabolic antenna or a ridiculously high-powered antenna that we can shoot internet or just shoot a network connection to the top of that mountain right there, let me know because we are going to do this. That's all there is to it. We're going to do it. So I hope there's some, uh, some marketing companies out there with Vision who will help us make this happen. Because it's going to whether you're going to help us or not. <laughs> you can either stand on the sidelines and watch. You can get involved, okay? <laughs> not like a certain unnamed company's marketing plan to snowboard off the top of a mountain because who would want to do that yeah intel who shall remain unnamed <laughs> you should have been up there playing you know land games you know i proposed this to those guys and i never heard back from them well now we know why Cause well, like, like no we're gonna snowboard yeah want a beanie <laughs> <laughs> taken it i've gone too far um well, they can redeem themselves by sponsoring this <laughs> <laughs> from Crimson Vioica uh, request lifestyle auto section of forum this is a request and justifies being under inbox.exe please make a forum section with automobiles airsoft furniture crafts like building a desk desk thanks so we I've been getting a lot of requests lately from people who want things that are just totally separate than what we normally talk about, and they want them to be a separate forum category. And there has been talk about certain things, but typically under general discussion. Um, and I haven't really thought of any way to handle this, and I don't know if it's stuff that's appropriate enough for the content that we do, like right now, and the content on our website and forum to deserve its own specific forum. But how do you think we should handle this? I don't know. I, I, I could see, like, from the maker side, it's like we're going to do custom mods on a car we're gonna do a custom computer for a car we're gonna do like interactive furniture i guess maybe possibly maybe maybe office furniture even something that's not as interactive just yeah it's like here's, here's here's my sit stand desk where i hit a button and it lifts up i could see our audience liking that and finding that interesting we i worry about because we have some forums now that only get a few posts a week and so i worry about creating a whole bunch of posts and the activities a little spread a little thin I'm going to ask you this, like, this is something like you and I have not even talked about. Do you think it would be possible to allow them to create their own little group on the website and it not be a forum, but it be a group that they have and even whoever creates it can be the manager of it? Yeah, almost it like a subreddit? Yeah, I was thinking that we could probably implement some function functionality like that maybe later this year um, that lets people create groups and so they can moderate and do that kind of thing. And we'll create some groups to sort of seed things, but then mm -hmm. people could go and create their own groups. And then you can join the groups and the, the groups work kind of like a forum but it lives in its own little place on the website maybe we could even list them under the forum like official maybe it could be official forums and community groups right yeah. beneath that or something like that we could probably do that yeah as long as it's as long as it's useful and not just you know random uh crap for spam it'd be fine it's on our to-do list of things uh, that need to happen before we take over the world 
that good enough? I think so. Yeah. All right. Um, see here, this one is uh, Dear Logan. Recently, I've been listening to your album Ear Slayer a lot. One of my favorite tracks, Destroy. Uh, I especially like the part the piano is playing. I was wondering if you could uh, post the sheet music for that, as I like to learn to play, um, but I can't find it anywhere on the internet. Thanks. Well, I don't exactly have sheet music for this stuff, and uh, I know that I implied that there may be a real piano. There are real piano samples in there, and uh, when you read the description for uh, Zweihander, it says that I allow myself to use real pianos and strings and drums, and what I mean is that th those sound effects are not um, chip tune. They're not 8-bit or 16-bit sound effects. They are actual live drum samples. I mean, I, I can play the piano and all that jazz. Get it? But, I, you know, I bought a, a piano or a, a digital keyboard for the studio, and just, I, there was not enough room. I sold it, like, two days later because I kept... I was getting angry because I kept bumping into things, <laughs> like the piano. I, I needed... I want 88 keys, and I just kept smacking into everything. So I, I sold it, like, two days later, and I was really frustrated and all that stuff. Maybe I'll get a new one soon. Um, but the, the sheet music is not available online. But if you like the piano stuff, the second album that's coming out as soon as possible has a ridiculous amount of piano in it. So you'll like it. I think you'll like it a lot. Uh, send me an email. You're allowed to if you can find it. And I'll send you some of the new songs just as a, you know, what's up. <laughs> oh, God, you're going to get 300 emails. I'm not going to send everybody songs, just him. Cause I'm, he, I'm he posted guy. it in the inbox. If you posted it in the inbox, maybe you would get personalized responses from my email, too. But only he's going to get it. I'm going to look for his name. Uh, favorite website to, to discover music. Uh, that's all stuff like I, I like um, Psycho Sid. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> TechSyndicate.com is probably the best site for me to discover music. People should probably reply to that thread with, hey, you should listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> that almost happened in one inbox. Um, X-ray lenses. Let's see here. Tech bag. This is interesting, but I don't really... Uh, this would be better answered once I'm in New York, and you can answer, and then Kane and I can both answer. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't... I don't even really... My tech bag is a USB stick, because the type of problems that I'm solving are not the kind that can be solved with a screwdriver. Okay, I'll answer this one quickly. How to make the first best fried eggs ever. So he watched our PAX video, and I said that these were the second best fry, fried eggs ever. And the reason they're the second best, not the first best, is I didn't have any beets on hand. So I typically slice up beets in almost like potato chip size, or beet chip size slices, and I throw those in the pan with the onions. Everything else is the same, and when you're finished, you have beets and onions, and it's delicious together. And then you um, throw some goat cheese on top of that. Beets and goat cheese are like nature's best friend. They were born together. <laughs> I don't think they were born together, but they might be delicious. <laughs> they are amazing together. Um, all right, one last question. Um, What's the deal with 1366 by 768? It's the devil's resolution. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what he said. Maybe he's trying to defend it. I don't know. I have to open it up real quick. A while back, I heard Wendell raging on about why he hated the screen resolution of 1366 by 768. Why this? From... Power noob! <laughs> Power noob, yeah. Well, first off, there are some good replies there. Um, it is a one pixel off um, an aspect ratio, first of all. But second of all, this is the really insidious thing. Some marketing people and engineer, uh, like, sorry. Some marketing people and executives force some engineers to come up with this resolution after the fact. It is almost always a horrible pixel density and always has been since it was created. And before it even existed, there were better resolutions available in the same size. But to make laptops cheaper or to increase panel yield rates or some other unholy reason, they <laughs> created this new panel resolution and were like, this is a perfectly reasonable panel resolution, and it's not. And the reason that it's not is because you don't have enough uh, pixels in height, the aspect ratio is weird, and like 50 other reasons that just make it completely ridiculous that engineers were forced to come up with this after the fact when we already had 1600 by 900 screens and we already had, you know, 1280 by 800. I would take 1280 by 800 over 1366 by 768 because while 1366 by 768 is wider, you lose you know, that 30 or 40 pixels at the bottom, and that's just unacceptable. And 1280 by 800 is almost, but not quite, as an unholy a resolution as uh, 1366 by 768. Before laptops went widescreen, you had 1280 by 1024. You shouldn't have fewer pixels on a newer generation laptop. This is just unacceptable. Sorry. 
<laughs> well, I'm glad we actually got all that out because a lot of people just thought like, oh, he's just being a car merchant and he, he's used to his 2560 by 1440 displays. And Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask one, I want to answer one more because I love making up names. And someone says that they want a nickname for their ITX build. This is from Broccoli. Broccoli! Because I'm going to be chopping it later. Um, so he, did, he built the exact same system as the Honey Badger except he used the, uh, like the Lime Green Bay Phoenix Prodigy, and he wants us to come up with a name for it. He liked our name, Honey Badger, and he loved the fact that we came up, and he just wants a nickname or a code name for his systems. So what we're going to do is I'll come up with a couple, and Wendell can come up with a couple, and then you tell us which one you picked in the, in the uh, comments. And if I like it, I'll send you an apple pie. Probably won't be good by the time it gets to you, but hey, it's a thought that counts, right? You're not going to get an apple pie. Probably not. <laughs> 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 All right, um, some names for this thing. It's green. Do you see it on the screen? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I've seen the green. Yeah, yeah. That's the pinto bean is not allowed, uh, and neither <laughs> is the green machine, or anything that rhymes with that. That's not allowed. Uh, what's a good name, like a, a lizard name? or a... I already had mine as Mean Green. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not allowed. <laughs> nope. I've, 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 these are the rules I've just made up. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the points don't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm that kid at the playground that changes, like, no, you can't do that one. Uh -uh. <laughs> the green is not allowed. Um, hum. What about an animal name? Like, um, how about the, uh... We well, could go with something subtle, like Envy. The Envy? Yeah. The in the letter N and V? Yeah. But green with Envy. <laughs> and then you'd have a simple name, just Envy. We're like, what's that? That's green with Envy. <laughs> That's not bad. Um, how about, uh, Terrence the Hammer? <laughs> <laughs> Terrence the Hammer. <laughs> Just, I don't know, I'm in, the, I'm in the mood for like a, a tough guy, but like a British movie tough guy name. This is, this here is Ter Terrence the Hammer. I'm, I'm, my British accent is completely off today. Well, we could give people in sort of our insight into our process for this. So it's like, okay, it's the honey badger is small, but it means business like a, like a honey badger. Yeah, it doesn't give a shit. So this thing is small green and means business. So mm -hmm. what, what animal fits that? Um... It's gonna have to be some kind of lizard, wouldn't it? Could be an aardvark. Aardvarks are green. Well, no, but they they mean business. Hmm. Ferrets also mean business. Because hmm. you can have a business of ferrets. Yes, you can have a business of ferrets. <laughs> a flamboyance of flamingos. <laughs> a murder of crows. The frantic ferret. <laughs> the frantic ferret. <laughs> I was hmm. thinking about diseases that make the ferrets green, but. The rabid ferret? I mean, rabid is just so overused. <laughs> the ferret with botulism? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're failing right now. Um, hmm. I've got a good one. I'm going to have a good one in a minute. How about the uh, ostentatious ocelot? I am much done like... That's assonance, but... Uh, I, I think that's a distribution of Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cut all these together into like a bunch of quick cuts. <laughs> No, it's more fun with the awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> this is our process. <laughs> it's terrible. It's like watching the meat grinder <laughs> grinding a hole, whatever it is that's going into the meat grinder. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what happens when you mix a ferret and a frog? Um, hmm. A ferrog? No, that's not very good. A froggit? No, I don't like that either. I don't like that name at all. Um... The Ferocelot. <laughs> the Ferocelot. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good one. That's probably it right there. All right, so I, I uh, have decided that you should name yours. It's a mixture of a ferret and an ocelot because it means business, like a business of ferrets, and it's got the agility of an ocelot, therefore it is the Ferocelot. I'm going to have to go with just NV for mine. That's All my right. simple name. So let me know which one you pick, the Ferocelot or the NV. <laughs> or something <laughs> else that's less terrible. <laughs> Those, those are both pretty good. No, they're both very terrible. I gotta threaten the audience. Oh well, you wanna? We've got a name for the new thing too. We might that it fits right now if you want. Oh, the ice weasel. Yep, it's like our new editing rig that's Xeon based or whatever. Yeah, we're we're making the ice weasel soon. And we're we're aware that Firefox on Ubuntu is called Ice Weasel, but this is the Ice Weasel editing rig. Damn it. it we, we may um we may alter the name slightly. Maybe it'll be the Ice Ferret. <laughs> the Ferocelot. If you don't use that, let me know. I'll use it. <laughs> the working title is Ice Weasel. <laughs> I envy the Ferocelot. <laughs> um, all right, so you should be subscribing about right now because this was awful. If you do not subscribe, 
I will trap you in a lecture hall, and I will read to you... Oh, man, I was about to say Twilight, but I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. Yeah, you, you could definitely not do that. Maybe we could use text-to-speech with that, because you could. It, it would be like the thing where you press the button and then it executes the person instead of directly executing okay, the person. Okay, I'll, I'll lock you in a lecture hall, in a big lecture hall. All the doors will be sealed. And, um, no, I'll actually pay for whoever wrote that swill to come into the room and read it to you. I don't know that they would survive. I mean, the people that manufactured the, the gas that killed everybody didn't, you know, I don't know. Now the world will be a better place. Because all the subscribers and the people that, you know, wrote Twilight, whoever they are. It's like the companies that make the mustard gas for American companies. You know, they didn't, they don't come demonstrate the product. So, it's, Twilight's kind of like that. <laughs> it's, it's the intellectual version of mustard gas, is that what I'm saying? Yes, Twilight... <laughs> <laughs> is the intellectual version of mustard gas. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>